How about we... No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I got a better idea, Jin and Tashin. We've always been using LED lights these past few months for video shoots. That's and right. we've always been using studio strobes, flash and all that for photo shoot. Yeah. Yeah. This time, I was thinking that why not we take these LED lights and see whether we can do nicer shots oh. in the studio for photo shoot. What do you think? No, we are filming here. I'm filming too. Let's take cut. This will never end. Okay, hey, before we start, let's say a big thank you to Viltrox. Viltrox made this video possible by sponsoring this. And this is the premise of this video. I've always been using studio strobes like this. Studio flash like this are cheap, not easy to learn at all, because what it does, condensers in there, they'll suck up all this electricity and boom! When you click the camera, it emits very intense light. So it can produce very bright light, which means I can shoot with very high F number and get photos looking like this. These are low key photos with a lot of shadows. In fact, I don't even need a black backdrop simply because studio strobes like this are really bright. Now that's it, they are not easy to learn at all. In fact, we need to come up with rules to predict the light because by the time you click the camera, only then you see the light. And that's why we have rules like Famous 5, Big 5, and I cover this extensively in my e-learnings here. So you should head on to these e-learnings and learn how to do this. These are lost skills very soon. Why do I say that? And this is what we want to find out in this episode. New LED lights like this, they are constant light, perpetually on. They are cold light. Look at this. I can actually hold this, touch this, and it even gets brighter. So bright that you probably see everything white now. Now, with this light being so available, affordable now, and at the same time, I can see the light. I don't have to like predict the light. I wonder whether they will support me creatively, whether they're bright enough, they're easy to work with, and whether they will rival the studio flashes that I've been using for the past 25 years. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with one light, the We Light Ninja 20 LED light, and let's see what it does. <music> Look at these photos, they look like shit. They're just not bright enough. How can this happen? Let me tell you what happened. Jin then found out that the power that I set was just at 40%. That is why it's not bright enough. And I thought I was going like 80, 90%. He cranked up the knob and immediately lo and behold, look what I can get now. At ISO 200 or 400, I can clock F11 and F16. Now we are talking, look at the series of photos that we get. Mm, now I'm feeling comfortable. A light needs to be bright. And then with this, I can now do different stuff. I can now have modifiers because every time you put in a modifier, especially a modifier that makes light soft, you're going to cut away two stops. And look at these photos. They're just soft and subtle. I can really control light. And you know what I really like about this? The ability for me to see where the light is shining now. That is a little bit difficult for me, to be honest. For the past 25 years, I've been using rules like lighters, cheat sheet, the big five, you know, all these famous five, big five rules that we have. The bigger the light, the softer the light. And then we're talking about brighter light, darker shadow, and all that stuff I don't need to predict anymore because all I need to do is just point the light where I want it, come to the front, and look at this. If it looks great, I just need to take the shot. In fact, I can even meter, something I've never been able to do with studio strobes. Because studio strobes, when you click, the light goes off and boom, too late. You already took that shot. So you have to calculate the light. With the Light Ninja 20 and all the LED lights that we have, it's effortless. It's what you see is what you get. 
And after looking at all these shots, I kind of like get confident now. After one hour in, I can say that this is one of my favorite shoe to run in. I run a lot. And it's like every time you change a shoe, two things can happen. You can run badly or you can run worse than bad. This one, I feel that I can run faster. Now I understand the characteristics and behavior of this light. I can now play around and make it bigger. You know what? I'm going to add a huge flag, a silver reflective flag over this side and bounce light and see what kind of shots that I get. It's so bright. It can like really light up me over this side and still bounce over that side and then get reflected light over the other side. These are the shots that we get. And now I know I can get creative with it. You know what you do? You add more LED light. So I put one more on the ground, and then I put one more at the back there, and then I put one more here, and then I even put gels to them, and then I can get color. You know what? Once you can add gels to this, amazing. You have a lot of stuff you can do, like adding fork and smoke. So I want you to enjoy these photos here, what I did with Millet. So viewers, here's the summary. Can constant LED lights like this, like the WeLight Ninja 20, be good enough for studio photo shoots? My answer, yes. Let me tell you why. I spent 25 years and a good first six years to master studio strokes. And now I'm spending just two hours and I can get photos like this. What I like about this, I can really see the light. I can like position the light, go to the viewfinder, go to the screen, I can see it, you know, adjust it until it's good, move the light until it's great and then take that shot. Even better, I can even meter it like natural lighting. So if you ask me, I find that it's really fast to work with and it supports me creative. When you're fast, you can do creative stuff. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Go right ahead and use these LED lights for your next photo shoot and explore the creativity that you can get with it. Even better, combine LED lights with studio strobes. I bet you can find amazing things there. And that's it. You still need to know how to work with light to get good quality light. You know when to make them soft, you know when to make them hard, you know when to feather them off, you know how to make the shadow darker and all that stuff, which means that you still need to learn a fair bit of legacy lighting. So that's it. I want you to head on to my e-learning now. This is serious, not because I want to sell you courses. I can only do this easily and it only take me like an hour to two hours to learn this and master this, unlike studio strokes. That took me a good five to six years to master and understand. Head on to this e-learning and you still need to understand classic and legacy lighting rules like this. So that's it. I want to say a big thank you for watching this video and also a huge thank you to Viewtrox for making this possible. And go ahead and create great photos with great lighting and try LED lights. They're fantastic. You know what? Combine LED lights with studio strokes. And again, Viewtrox, thank you for making this video. Possible. If you haven't been to Viewtrox website, you should because this is a brand and a company that makes awesome photography and videographic equipment from lenses, camera cages, field monitors. Their field monitors are really awesome. In fact, I'm using their 4K field monitors. If I'm not wrong, we have about four units of Viewtrox field monitors. They are good quality, they're long lasting and affordable too. Apart from that, Viewtrox also make lenses. So if you're a photographer or videographer looking to improve on the arsenal equipment that you have, look no further. Viewtrox make awesome products. Check out our website right here. And Jin, good take cut. Hey. Cut before Millet come and shake his here and then ruin the whole good text. Quick! <laughs> She's coming. Cut!